If there's one thing about a lot of preaching that leaves a bit to be desired, and my preaching certainly fits this critique, it's that we preachers can be long on lofty, flowery oratory, but short on concrete details. Yesterday's devotional on hope and the reign of God is a case in point. It was filled with high and lofty rhetoric, but lacked a lot of specifics about how we actually live our lives here and now. In fairness, that's largely because it's really hard to talk about John's vision of the New Jerusalem in concrete terms. But is our Christian hope only in things like that? Is our hope only in things that exist in the realm of flowery language? Or is there an element of Christian hope that exists in the rough and tumble of the ordinary world we live in here and now? I think you probably already know my answer to that question. Hello, I'm Stuart Baskin, pastor of First Presbyterian Church of Tyler, Texas, and this is your daily devotional for Friday, December 2nd, 2022. All this week I've been talking about hope since we lit the candle of hope this past Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent. A major element of our hope, of course, is the promise of the resurrection. But another major element of our hope has little or nothing to do with the resurrection or our salvation. I suggested yesterday that a major part of our hope is that God's will and way in the world will finally and fully come into being. Yesterday, I referred to that great passage out of the Revelation to John in which John talks about his vision of a new heaven and a new earth. Today's passage is from Isaiah, and it also talks about a new heaven and a new earth. In fact, it seems pretty obvious that John knew this passage and borrowed from it to describe his vision of the new Jerusalem. Here's what the prophet says, recorded in the 65th chapter of Isaiah. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth, for the former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there, shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity, for they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. You can see that while there is lofty language here, it speaks to a very concrete circumstance. And in this circumstance, we learn the context of our hope. The prophet has been speaking about economic justice and inequality, or how the poor are often relegated to the sidelines and actively taken advantage of and abused by the wealthy and powerful. Notice the language here. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Building houses only to have someone else live in them isn't like someone today working for a building contractor. This is literally building a home for your own family only to have someone else commandeer it for their own purpose. It's about economic theft, which was all too easy to accomplish in those days. The hope in this passage speaks to a very concrete hope for a future when people no longer take unfair advantage of other people. 
and it speaks to what our Christian hope should be, not only for our own personal salvation, but for a world where the poor are cared for and abused no more, a world without hunger or homelessness, a world without war or injustice. It's about more than pie-in-the-sky stuff. It's about the very real and very tragic circumstances of everyday life, especially for the poorest of the poor whose needs are often most neglected. Our Christian hope is in part for the day when God will heal the world. Tomorrow, how hope helps us. But for now, may God continue to bless you and keep you in all that you do this day and in all the days ahead.